Hello, in this section of the tutorial we're going to learn how to use the TI-83, TI-84 matrix functions. Uh, so the calculator is actually very very good at handling matrices and does almost everything that you want to do in a typical class setting uh, to deal with matrices and the good news is it saves you a great deal of time because matrix operations by hand is uh, not hard, it's just time consuming. So for the TI-84 calculator the uh, matrix button is really a second function up here. If you have a TI-83 or an older calculator, you might actually have a dedicated matrix button on your calculator, so just press that instead. But other than that, everything should be very similar. So to go into the matrix menu, we hit the second function and go down here and hit this button to get into the matrix. Now, you're presented with this menu. It looks a little bit daunting, but basically what, any matrices that you have stored uh, here are, are labeled with letters. So matrix A, matrix B, matrix C. So those are just the names. I mean, that's all it is. And you can go down and you can see you have more after seven. Uh, you have eight, <coughs> eight, nine, and zero. So you have 10 matrices you can store at any given time in this calculator as far as permanently storing them. Uh, now let's say you had uh, a matrix that you had stored already in matrix A. So under the names column here, if you just hit enter or hit the number one, then it will just put that name on the calculator screen and you can do all kinds of things with it you can multiply with it you can divide with it this is this is where you would do your calculations if we just hit enter here we're going to get an error because this particular matrix is completely empty so there's nothing to do uh, so let's clear it and go back to the matrix menu and now let's go ahead and put a matrix in there so let's skip the math menu for a second this is where you do a lot of the uh, math functions on a matrix let's go over to the edit menu so it's the same kind of thing. Whatever matrix you would like to edit, in other words, um, put numbers in for the matrix, you have to go to, over to the Edit tab. So for matrix A, let's hit uh, hit 1. Let's say we have, uh, and, and at the top it's asking us, okay, matrix A, is it a 1 by 1 matrix? What do you, What is it? You can type in the dimensions of the matrix. Always remember, this will help you, in matrix math, when you have the dimensions like this, it's always row by column. So think of row and column, row and column, row and column. So this is one row and one column. If we change it to uh, uh, two, enter, three, enter, then this is two rows and three columns. So you get the idea. If we go back up there, we change our mind, we might make it five rows by two columns, right? So we have five rows, two columns. So you can construct... Uh, really any size of matrix you want. In reality, there is a, a limit to the size of the matrix you can you can make, but I guarantee you that for a classroom, this calculator will more than be able to handle any matrix that you'll throw at it on a test or on a problem. Okay, so you go ahead and list it here. Let's go ahead and do something simple like um, three by two, just to keep it a little bit more manageable. So let's change this to three. We'll hit enter. So three rows, two columns. Now notice that all of my entries have decimal points. That's just because the mode menu over here, um, I've got a decimal point uh, here. I've got a decimal point here. If I change that to zero, like if I, if I knew that I was always working in whole numbers with my matrix, then I could get out of here, go back to the matrix menu, go back to the edit menu, and you see now it tells me that matrix A is a three by two matrix because I've told it what, what matrix that is. So I can hit enter here and all of my entries are nice whole numbers now and that's what you usually see in your book and that's because I just changed the mode menu there so remember that so in order to make changes it's just like you would guess you go down here and you type them in um, so what if I had you know one five six two nine eight so it's just as simple as that and I can, I can of course put negative numbers in here I can do uh, things like that. So that's a matrix. Now it's already saved. You don't have to do anything specific to make it save. Uh, so if you go back to the matrix main menu, you will now see that it tells you matrix A is a three by two matrix. That's what's currently stored there. Um, so if you at this point hit enter now, then it's going to put that. Let me actually clear this. This will make it. This will make it simpler to understand. Let me get out of this. Clear. Let's go back to the matrix menu under names if I hit number one now then it's just going to put that name on the stack like that now 
it's giving you the opportunity to multiply it or divide it or whatever. We'll learn how to do that in a second. But for now, let's just hit enter. Then it's going to return the exact same matrix I put in, 1, 5, 6, 2, 9, 8. This is what I typed in, exactly uh, the way, the way uh, we typed it in there. So, so when you have matrices stored and then you put the name like this and you hit enter, you're going to see what you have. Now, if I want to do some math with this, I certainly can. What if I want to multiply this matrix by 2? A lot of different ways to do that. I can say uh, 2. And then I have to put matrix A back there. So I'll just go ahead and hit enter again. 2A, that's mul that's multiplying the matrix by a scalar. So I'll hit enter and see every element here is multiplied by 2. 5 times 2 is 10, 6 times 2 is 12, and so on. So that's what matrix math is. I can also say 2 times um, matrix A. Same thing, no different. I can use it with or without the uh, division symbol. Um, you know, so you can do basic multiplication of a matrix like that. Um, what if you want to, let's go back into the matrix menu. And let's start to look at some of these basic math functions. Some of these things I'm not going to do until a little bit later. Um, but I want to show you what we have. We have, we can take the determinant. Uh, some of these things I'm not going to go over because they're not terribly useful. But like, for instance, this one, number three, gives you the dimensions of the matrix. Well, you already know what that is because you typed in it was a three by two matrix. Um, this one's a transpose. We could do that one right now. Let me go out uh, here and let's go back into the matrix menu. Let's hit number one so that A goes onto the stack. Now before hitting enter, let's go back into the matrix menu. It's a little bit cumbersome having to go into the matrix menu all the time, but it gets the job done. Go down here to the transpose. Actually, before I do that, let's put the matrix back up on the stack before I do the transpose. So let's go that's the regular matrix. We put that on the stack. We go back into the matrix menu, over to the math menu, down to transpose like this. So we've put the regular matrix on the stack that we have. Now we're going to transpose this matrix and see what happens. Notice what happens here. All of the rows here become columns in this matrix, and that is what a matrix transpose is. So 1, 5, 1, 5, 6, 2, 6, 2, 9, 8, 9, 8. So transposing a matrix is not a hard operation, but it's nice to know that it's built into the to the TI here. So maybe you have a very long expression expression that involves the transpose of a matrix. You can just type it in like that. What else do we have in here in the math menu? Um, there's not too many other things here, honestly. Uh, I'm going to get to these row reduced forms in another section, and these things I'm going to get to in, in another section now. So for now. Let's go and put another matrix in here. So let's do matrix B. We're going to edit a matrix. So that's why we're in the edit menu. Let's hit B. And let's make this one instead of a, um, a uh, two by three matrix, let's make this one a three by two matrix. So let's go over here into the edit menu. We'll go down to B. So instead of three by two, let's make this one two by three. And you'll see why I'm doing that in a second. Uh, and we can just type in anything here, negative 2, 0, negative 3, 1, 5, 6, 8. So we've got our matrix B. Okay, so let's go ahead and get out of here. And so we're in the blank calculator screen. So let's put calculator, calculator uh, I'm sorry, matrix A up on the screen. And let's multi multiply it by matrix B. So we'll hit number 2. Matrix A times matrix B. So you're doing your basic matrix multiplication. And you hit enter, and it does all of the math for you. It's again, matrix math is not hard. It's just there's a lot of there's a lot of um, ability to make an error because you're just doing a lot of multiplication and, and addition all the time. So you have to get the um, the dimensions correct of these matrices uh, in order to do matrix multiplication. And if you get the wrong dimension, it's not going to work. So for instance, in this case. If we go back and look here, let me just put matrix A on the stack for you and show you what that looks like. And then we'll go over here, number two, to get matrix B on the stack and show you what that looks like. So here the matrices that we multiplied together, you see how the, the uh, they don't look identical. And, and in general they won't for matrix multiplication because when you multiply A by B, you're taking this, quant this number times negative two plus this number times this one. So the number of columns in the matrix, the first matrix has got to be the same as the number of rows in the second matrix. 
So what we can do here is we can go up here and instead of making this two by three, let's make it a nice square three by three matrix. Let's make it a three by three matrix and it's going to put some zeros down here, but that's fine. We don't really care what values we have. Let's go ahead and clear all this stuff off. We'll go to the matrix menu. We'll hit number one. That's going to put matrix A there. We'll try to multiply by matrix B. Number two, matrix A times matrix B, and then we will hit enter and dimension mismatch. So if you ever get something like that, then you've probably, uh, well, you definitely have, have got the wrong size matrices for whatever it is you're trying to do. So you, and a lot of times in matrix math, you have to have the right dimensions like we talked about for multiplication. And so uh, you, need to, you need to know that. Okay, so we've talked about matrix multiplication. We've talked about, uh, we talked about multiplying a matrix by a scalar. Now we'd like to add and subtract matrices. You're gonna find those very easy, but in order to add or subtract a matrix, the two matrices must be the same dimensions and these two matrices are not. So let's go into the uh, uh, edit menu for this guy, for number, for A here. Uh, actually, I did the wrong thing. Let's go into the matrix menu and we'll go over to the edit menu over here for matrix A and we'll hit this guy. And let's go ahead and make it a nice square three by three matrix. And we could just put some values here in the last column. Negative two. And we could just leave zero for that last one. That's fine. Now we'll go back to the matrix menu. And we'll edit the second matrix, which is also three by three, but we had a lot of zeros down here from before. So let's go ahead and at least change some of these things to something other than zero so we can have something to really show. And nine. It's okay to have some zeros in there. Some matrices really do have zeros. Okay, so we have two matrices, both of them are three by three. So let's go clear the stack out, go back to the matrix menu. Now we're in the names section, so we'll hit one plus two. So matrix A plus matrix B. Now this will only work if they're the same size matrices, otherwise you can't add them, you'll get a dimension mismatch again. But if you hit enter, everything is is here and what it's done is it's taken every element of each of these matrices and add them to add them together and you can do the same thing with uh, subtraction you could say a minus b you can do a minus b and then you can hit enter and it's going to subtract the two matrices so basically adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing matrices are all very intuitive you just use the calculator buttons um, you can also take a matrix and I've never really used this before myself too much, but you can raise it to power. Let's say you want to square this matrix. It's going to square the matrix. So there's, there's a lot of different things you can do with the calculator and it's very intuitive. The main thing is, is you need to know how to input them so that you can proceed. Now, another thing that you're definitely want, going to end up doing with matrices eventually is taking the inverse of a matri matrix and also taking the determinant of a matrix. Both of them are very easy to do in the TI calculators. Just go to the matrix menu uh, and you got to put a matrix on the stack. Let's say we want to take an inverse. Let's take an inverse of matrix A. So we'll hit number one. It's going to put matrix A here. And to take an inverse, all you do is press this button right here, which is effectively raising it to the negative one power, but the calculator is not raising each element to the negative one power. It's going in and it's it's doing the proper uh, algorithm to use the elements to, to calculate the inverse. So we hit enter and we get a matrix that looks something like this for the inverse of that matrix. If we go to matrix B, number two, and we hit the inverse, then we get something like that for the inverse of the of the of the matrix. So if we go to the matrix and put this on the stack, A times, let's just do something cute for a second. We'll do matrix inverse of A. So let's take A, matrix A, and multiply it by its own inverse. And what you will get back is what we call an identity matrix. And that's exactly what you should get back for, for, a, um, for an inverse. That's what an inverse is. It's another matrix such that when you multiply it by the first matrix, you get a diagonal ones like this. And by the way, as an aside, you have a very easy way into the, in this calculator of generating a matrix, an identity matrix. Sometimes you need to use them in calculations. So um, if you want an identity matrix, just go in the math menu up here of the, of the matrix menu and hit number five. And it's just going to ask you what the dimensions you want are. So let's say I want a four by four identity matrix. It always has to be a square matrix. So you hit enter. 
and it, the calculator just returns a nice identity matrix for you. So, and that is very, very useful. So if you ever need that, don't create a new matrix and type in ones and zeros, just go in here and put a dimension in, hit, you know, and then you have the thing right there. And you can use this in an expression or in or another calculation if you need to. So that's how you take inverses. You just go in here, you, you hit the guy, and then you hit the inverse button and then put it there uh, like that. And another interesting thing that you're definitely going to do eventually is you go into the matrix menu in the math menu. The very first thing is determinant of a matrix. So you go ahead and hit number one, determinant of, and it's going to ask you what matrix are you trying to take the, the uh, determinant of. So you have to type that in as well. So let's say it's matrix number one or uh, matrix A. So you hit number one. So you're taking the determinant of matrix A and you're hitting enter. And so you should always just get a single number back for determinants. Determinants are, again, just like everything else in matrix math, they're not hard. Um, it's just that there's a lot of math, especially if you get up into a matrix beyond a, a two or a three um, by three matrix, because then is when you um, you get into a lot of math in order to calculate it. It's all addition and subtraction and division and stuff. It's just not, not very easy to do by hand. So you have the determinants of the matrices. So with these tools, it's very, very easy to work with matrices in the TI calculators. You just input them and working with them really is just like adding numbers and subtracting numbers. It's just that just like in doing math, you have to make sure the dimensions are right. That's not the calculator. That That is the math involved. It has to be conformed to the rules. Uh, you also have inverses and determinants that you can calculate very easily. So at this point, you have all of the tools to really deal with matrices in a very natural way. And you'll be able to solve systems of equations with matrices very easily and also by multiple different methods now that you know this stuff. So we'll go and wrap it up this section. Practice this stuff. Play around with it. It's kind of fun. And in the next section, we'll learn how to solve the systems of equations.